Jeff, what, what about the causes and, and predictors of, of relapse? Well, um, I mean, the, the predictors of relapse uh, in part depend on a lot of the causes in the sense that um, it's the causal factors which really are the things that are inducing an individual's vulnerability to relapse. So, but to begin at the beginning, contrary to historically what was a pretty pessimistic view of the therapeutic prospects of people with schizophrenia, when we began doing studies of people with schizophrenia with antipsychotic drugs who were in earlier stages of the illness, it was appreciated that they had a pretty good symptom response to treatment in terms of achieving a reduction or even a remission of their symptoms. And as numerous studies have demonstrated, after you have an acute response, continuing treatment prevents the likelihood of recurrence. Um, and uh, then the question was, how long do you sustain treatment? And I believe that you know, the sum of all the maintenance treatment studies have shown that you're never really safe that if you stop treatment, there's a higher rate, a risk of relapse than if you remain on treatment by a lot. So the prudent course of treatment would be to sustain medication on an ongoing basis at uh, the lowest effective dose, which is tolerable. Now, what happens that leads people to relapse <clears throat> is that many people don't want to stay on medication and they're not adherent and they can be non-adherent because there are side effects they object to that aren't uh, addressed adequately. Um, they don't like the idea of taking medication because it's somehow stigmatizing. Um, and, or they think they can just do without it. And if they stop, then essentially uh, it's a matter of time in most cases till they have a recurrence. In addition, um, things can even overcome the prophylactic effects of medication in preventing relapse. Stress, for example, if somebody experiences massive stress in their life, whether it's intrafamilial or whether it's a change in you know, the treatment providers or something, and then there's the uh, ubiquitous problem of uh, recreational drug use. And it's not all recreational drugs, like alcohol is not necessarily so bad, but stimulants and cannabis are really bad. Um, and then some people's illness may be severe enough so that just the cyclicity of the illness can break through maintenance treatment. So those are the main causes, and therefore the predictors, apart from the symptoms beginning to return, are if individuals have past history of non-adherence, past history of substance abuse, uh, or past history of uh, recurrences even in the presence of, of maintenance antipsychotic drug treatment. So one of the factors you mentioned that's very important is non-adherence, and we know that that's a, a challenge in any chronic illness. Uh, many of the studies suggest that uh, rates of relapse among patients who are non-adherent are, are pretty striking, and you've, you've certainly reported on some of those, some of those results. Right. I mean, when, when uh, you know, it goes back to, you know, Jerry Hogarty in the 70s, you know, the people stabilized on antipsychotics, stopped them, placebo-controlled trials, the relapse rate's three times higher, right. you know, over two or three years. So, um, you know, we know that staying on meds helps prevent relapse, at least over that period of Absolutely. time. Absolutely. Um, I think one, one of the uh, meta-analyses that uh, Stefan Leuk published suggested that the number needed to treat when you're comparing relapse rates on drug and placebo was three to four, which is, that's a very powerful effect. So I think one of the challenges that we have to face is helping patients to understand the need for medication and accept the need for medication. So Jeffrey, what, you know, what would you say in terms of um, discussing with patients the, the signs of relapse? What, what, how would you approach that conversation? Well, first, I think people uh, who have schizophrenia or diagnosed with uh, schizophrenia and their families should be apprised of the, really the nature of the illness. You know, there was actually a, a form of a psychosocial adjunct to treatment called psychoeducation, which is not uh, that often practiced, but the intent of it was to provide some semi-formal kind of didactic information to patients and families, particularly if they're in the early phase of the illness where they don't know from experience what's in front of them, and that this is not a one-time deal. It's not like, you know, you have chicken pox and then you're immunized for life. 
um, and that it is potentially a recurrent illness that's chronic and can be disabling. Um, and then, in addition, a discussion about the benefits and risks of medication is warranted. And it's more than just, well, the, the medication helps you, your symptoms uh, uh, be, be reduced, and that there's some side effects you could experience. It's really, what are the benefits and risks for extended treatment, taking it for a long period of time? Um, and in that context, there's longer-term side effects, which used to be more of a problem with the first-generation drugs in terms of tardive dyskinesia, but for the second generation, there's the potential for weight and metabolic effects. Um, and then the issue about whether there's uh, the potential for progression of the illness if individuals sustain recurrent episodes. And, um, you know, there is, you know, the, the, any patient-doctor relationship should have a mutuality which allows for shared decision-making. But in order for the patient and the family to be able to express an informed opinion, they need to understand uh, information about the illness and what the consequences are. And then, if they want to take their chances off medicine, you know, do so. But the reality is, is that all of the evidence you know, points to the fact that uh, treatment is effective and sustained treatment mitigates the likelihood of people having recurrences and therefore the possibility that uh, the illness can progress and complications can develop. I think you're really right that, you know, if you can teach people about what the illness is like and, and you know, that it's recurrent or can recur and so people can you know, family members in particular might notice if someone's becoming more withdrawn or sleeping less or, you know, not taking their meds or, or abusing substances that, you know, that's, that's a harbinger well, of problems. There's, there's a common criticism that's leveled at us uh, that we're pill pushers and we're trying to just, you know, uh, push medications on people, which is, I mean, there may be some individuals who are a little too uh, uh, excessive, but you know, most physicians are trying to use the medication judiciously, and when you take medicines for hypertension, for diabetes, for asthma, for, 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 for you know, statins, you know, nobody blinks an eye uh, for taking it on an ongoing basis, but when it comes to psychotropic drugs, uh-oh, you know, uh, you're copping out or you're taking it uh, uh, unnecessarily.